Hey, how's everyone doing out there? This is Andy of AP Saxon Repair. I'm a technician and player in the Chicagoland area, and I want to create a video to show you the differences between the Con 10M and the Con 30M for those who are looking for one on the used market. I have a Saxon collection here, and I have a couple of these that I want to share with you today. We're going to start with the Con 30M, which was produced from 1935 to 1943. This specific 30M was uh, made in 1936 to 274,000, and it's marked Conqueror on the bell, the Con Conqueror, the 30M. These instruments are considered the finest cons that were ever produced, uh, especially mechanically. They're just phenomenal. Uh, very complicated mechanisms on these instruments. And uh, if you ever get these worked on, make sure you get these worked on by a professional who has experience with these instruments because they're easy to mess up, especially the table mechanism. So starting with the neck, this is one of the things that makes the Conqueror the Conqueror. The octave mechanism here is mounted with two pivot screws on the side like this, which are pretty hard to regulate when they get out of adjustment. Um, it kind of gives it this Art Deco look, which is very beautiful. Now here's a normal con neck. It's mounted with a rod in the middle. This is from a later 10M, which I'll show you a little bit later in the video. That's pretty standard. They've had that design since the teens pretty much. Um, so this is the main difference between the two models for the neck is just this mechanism. I've seen some used 30Ms on the market, especially real accurate ones that have this style neck. Now the neck tube is basically the same, just that the octave mechanism is a little bit different. Um, so it's not a deal breaker if you find one of these that has this mechanism on it, it still works fine. It's not original, I prefer the original ones, but it is what it is sometimes, so don't let that freak you out, especially if the price is right. Okay, uh, another important feature of the Con 30M is each touch piece is has sterling silver inlay that's hard soldered in. It's an aesthetic thing. It really makes these things beautiful and stand out. Holds up to, you know, your pans over the years. I guess that was the idea just to avoid, you know, rubbing lacquer off and eating through the brass. Pretty durable stuff, this sterling silver. Um, really amazing craftsmanship to create the seams like they do. Thumb hook's also solid sterling silver. Uh, another thing that makes the Conqueror the Conqueror is these perm adjustment screws on the upper and lower stacks and table mechanism. You can loosen these set screws here and adjust, so I'm trying to get the angle there, and adjust the heights. So you can really customize the way this thing feels a lot easier than just replacing cork. Um, it's often mounted with felt in the bottom here with these little circles. It's a pretty ele elegant design. I personally like it on the stacks. The table mechanism is a different story. This is a very complicated thing. Um, and what makes the Conqueror the Conqueror is this mechanism. Um, on a lot of the cons, the C-sharp specifically is very heavy because it's one solid rod that goes all the way down to the body that actuates the key. Uh, this mechanism is split up, so it's a lot lighter to push down, and the angle of this uh, table mechanism is all overall like a lot more flat than a 10M, which I'll show you a little bit later. Um, it makes it a lot more easy to play, uh, specifically rolling down to the B-flat. This is a little more accessible than the early models. You can also roll all the way across from C-sharp to B-flat which is often a problem with these cons. Um, I would say overall, it still works better from pushing all the way over, but you have that option to go down. Um, B is a lot lighter to the B flat, and when these are set up correctly, they just they feel great, but they take a lot of work. And like I said, you need to find a trained professional that uh, has worked on several of these to make these just right so there's not any play. They feel nice and light, nothing's rubbing, because uh, it is quite the feat to get these to feel the way they need to feel. Um, other than that, this is pretty much extensively engraved, like a lot of the cons. It has the Naked Lady on the bell, like the M series does. Um, has the Pentagon, and the Lady engraving, and this is a little more extensive too with her hair. Um, kind of an interesting design. But this instrument really sings. Um, we'll talk about some of the sonic differences uh, after the sound clip, but in general, these are big, lush, beautiful sounding instruments. An important thing to note as well, on a lot of these vintage cons, the strap ring is in the wrong position. So when you put your neck strap on, it kind of hits you in the face. So a way to correct this is unsolder this and move it down until you balance it to where you need it to, to be. Um, if this isn't balanced, you don't really have a fighting chance for making these things feel correct. Sorry, we got cut off there. Anyways, I'm gonna move ahead with the sound clip here and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
So the overall tone of this instrument is really dark, really powerful. I'm playing a, a Dukoff from 1945, not far off from uh, what Dexter Gordon played on this, and it feels really nice. Um, larger chamber mouthpieces on cons are always suggested. Uh, it locks the tuning in a lot better than something that has a really, really high baffle. Um, some Bergs can work on these horns pretty well, but you have to be careful. Um, you have to, you know, when you're play testing, just make sure the registers are even with themselves. Um, have, I've had a lot of people come by um, complaining about tuning issues on these cons, and I'm like, hey, switch to a larger chamber mouthpiece, softer reed if you need to, and that should clear it up, and it almost always does. Um, so a few things to look for on a 30M on the used market. Um, I would suggest going for an original one. Uh, they're a little bit more, uh, they're harder to find, but when you get them, uh, I think there's a, they're a pretty big difference. I played some real lacquers. Um, they're easier to work on when they're original, um, that kind of thing. It just, you're better off. I would save up and get an original one, but if you get a killing deal on a real lacquer, just make sure it wasn't buffed too much. Uh, make sure the body's straight, that kind of thing. Um, since the mechanism is so intricate on these instruments, um, it's really easy to mess them up, especially if it was in a school or a situation like that. So my suggestion is go original. I know Matt Storer uh, said the same thing in his video. I couldn't agree more. Um, so we're going to move on to the 10M. I'm going to get that one ready and hopefully enjoy that. All right, now it's time to talk about the Con 10M. This design came out in 1935 as well and was pretty much unchanged until 1959. After that, they added the double socket mechanism on the neck and changed the octave mechanism. Keys became nickel plated. Uh, it had clear lacquer after that. And once you get into the 60s, the quality goes down. Uh, that being said, I have played a lot of later 10Ms, especially ones you know from like the early 60s that still play really great. So if you're in the market to buy a 10M, uh, don't discriminate. Just try whatever you can, uh, depending on your budget, um, because some of those later 10Ms are really great for the money. Uh, one of my friends, Steve, has one, and it just plays its butt off, and it is a later one. Okay, so the instrument we're looking at right here is a 284,000 10M, original matte silver with the gold wash bell. I just had the pleasure of overhauling this in my shop uh, with bees and flat resonators with standard leather pads. Um, and yeah, there was pretty extensive overhaul. This is in my personal collection now, just feels great. Um, when these are set up correctly, they just play their butts off. Really phenomenal instruments. I really enjoy working on them. Um, so a few notable differences here. Let's start with the neck. So with the Conquer, I was talking about that underslung mechanism. Okay. Trying to get a good shot of it here. All right. And here's the 10M mechanism. I'm sure you guys have seen a few of these necks around. It's pretty more, pretty standard. Uh, this one on the Conquer definitely has a little bit more going on. It's a little harder to regulate. I have a couple pivot screws holding it together. Um, it's mainly for aesthetics. Um, so this is basically the 10M neck. The octa mechanism is the same. Palm keys are pretty much the same. The body tube is the same as a Conquer. Uh, like I said, the key work is what really differentiates the two. And all the key feet here, uh, there's no adjusting perm screws. It's just standard. You know, you shim it with cork, felt, whatever material is you want to use. Pretty standard. Um, the overall feel of this horn is much lighter, which is a huge advantage in my opinion. Um, often makes it vibrate a little bit more, um, depending on your opinion, of course. But um, the overall lightness of the body is appealing to a lot of people. Um, so the main difference obviously is the table mechanism, as you can see. The Conquer, let's try to go side by side here. It's a lot, lot more going on there. And the 10M, just the rods extend all the way down, especially in the C-sharp. It's not broken up with the mechanism, so it's a lot heavier of a feel compared to the Conquer. If you set these up correctly, it's still not bad, but the throw feels a lot different. It's more of an, on an angle. Uh, some people find these pretty uncomfortable. Uh, they do take some getting used to, and I would say they are worth getting used to if you like the sound of the instrument. Uh, some people don't, so if you're in the market for a 10M or you're curious, just try one, see if it's something you would want to take on, because it is a commitment. But when they're set up correctly, they're not super heavy. I think it's, you know, it's nothing you can't overcome, but like the roll from C sharp to B flat can be kind of arduous. Um, so overall characteristics of this horn, I would say uh, just because it's silver, it doesn't always mean it's brighter, but this instrument happens to be brighter than the 30M I have. Um, really vibrant. Um, it's still, you know, centered. It's not too bright. Uh, a lot of power like you want to have in a con. 
Uh, the engraving on these early 10Ms is, uh, you know, it's fairly deep. Um, and the main feature of this, basically 35 to 47 are considered the best cons because they have rolled tone holes. You can kind of see it there. The, the conquer I have has the rolled tone holes as well. Um, for collectors especially, this is a, a key feature. I have another 10M here from 1948, right after they switched to the straight tone holes. You can see you hit, see it there. Okay, these are actually easier to work on than the rolled tone holes um, from a repairman's perspective, repair person's perspective. Um, but yeah, the, the ones from 35 to 47 bring more money. They're considered to be more desirable in general, but that doesn't mean they play better necessarily because I've played plenty plenty of 10Ms from 48 to 59 that are great as well. So if you have an opportunity to get a, you know, a 10M at a pretty low price uh, in that range, try it out, see if it's something you like, because th sometimes they're not far off from the early ones. So I'm gonna give you a play test here, see what you think of the sound and uh, let me know. <laughs> As you can hear, there are some pretty extensive differences in the sounds between these two instruments. I would say overall, the 10M is probably more flexible than the 30M, especially if you're looking at musical styles such as rock and funk, R&B. Um, but certainly since Dexter Gordon played one for jazz, you can do it for that, no problem. The 30M definitely lends itself more to straight ahead playing, uh, ballad playing, that lush kind of vibe that we all look for, uh, especially in music from you know 30s and 40s, big band music, it really uh, opens up on that kind of stuff. But they're both a lot of fun to play. Um, they both retain that same kind of con core you're looking for, uh, you know, with something that you really can push and have fun with, uh, something that inspires you. Uh, really good choice, either one. Um, personally, I, I'm kind of torn. I've, I've been gravitating towards the 30M recently because I'm a brighter player, so something that's darker kind of balances better with me. If you're a brighter player as well, you might want to consider a 30M. If you tend to play darker, the 10M is a good balance as well. Um, just a matter of experimentation. If any of you guys have questions, don't hesitate to contact me on Facebook, AP Saxophone Repair. My website is saxophone.repair, especially if you need any repairs on any instruments like this. I specialize in these. All right, we got cut off a little bit there. So thank you for tuning in. I'm going to try to come out with one of these videos maybe every month or so, maybe a little bit sooner. Uh, see what kind of response I get. I've never done anything quite like this, but I want to share my saxophone collection with you, some of my knowledge. Uh, so again, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions regarding these. Um, it's been a lot of fun playing for you guys today, and I'll see you soon.